What's going on guys? So I'm on the continuation of the V8 swap S10 project here. So this is a yellow O3 S10 with the ZR2 package. And I have a home built 5.7 uh, Vortec V8 in it. If you watched the last video, you seen we did our first startup of it. And it went pretty well for the most part. We have a couple issues we gotta work through. We had one slight coolant explosion. But I'm ready to get this out on the road. We gotta make sure the transmission's shifting, we gotta get the rings broken in, and most importantly, we just gotta see what this baby's like out on the road. So that's what we're jumping into. Okay, so we have two main issues, I think, to get this sucker out and rolling and everything will be pretty close to perfect. Uh, sort of a third, because we had the coolant ordeal uh, I got that all taken care of for now, so we're down to just running issues. Uh, one, we have a high idle. Two, these backfires that are just almost random, just bam, gunshots going off. So there's something going on. I've looked through the timing, and we're going to get into that one. But the idle is what I went after first, and that ended up being something that was kind of stupid, actually. So after going through a whole bunch of trouble... Um, including using a fog machine and fogging the intake trying to check for vacuum leaks. I took a shot in the dark and I ended up taking the idle control valve out of the uh, kind of crusty V8 uh, original throttle body because I had the V6 one as that's on there now and I knew this one did work but apparently it maybe got a little bit of parts cleaner juice inside of it and decided to that it didn't want to go below 1500 RPMs anymore. It would go higher, but not lower. Okay, so I jumped in the truck and I wanted to show you where we're at now on our issues. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I'm sure you heard that. And there's the pop again. So, let's see if I can even get it running at all now. So, uh, now that our RPMs are down, our engine won't stay running. And like I said, I have those just popping. Um, something's not right. So, let's go back up to the engine. So, where I'm at now is I think I'm going to go through and relash all of the valves. So that's, um, it's the only part of the engine build that I kind of remember. I was like, did I do that right? There's obviously some things you have second thoughts about, but that was one of those things. It, it's been a while at this point, but I know I kind of questioned doing it. So just to be safe, I'm gonna go back and do it. The only downside is doing that on this engine that has you know a bunch of junk on it um is going to be a little bit of work not that bad but there's definitely i'm going to have to undo quite a few things to get to that point so i'm going to quit blabbering and i'm going to start tearing this down so we can see what's going on in the guts of her here and we're here so valve covers are off you can see all the rockers um, spark plugs are out. I got the accessory stuff dealt with enough so I can do this job. And all the other little miscellaneous stuff is off so I can get to this. So, uh, getting the covers off, not too bad. Getting the spark plugs was probably the biggest job of all of this. And not so much on this side. <laughs> A lot more, um on this side you can just tell that everything's just way more mashed back here 
Uh, and number eight back there, me and that guy had some words. Okay, so what I've noticed before I really got into anything right off the bat is if I don't know if you guys can tell, but on these push rods, they, uh, they're getting it skinned. So they're getting skinned alive. Um, I have the wrong push rods in here and we can get into why I tried using these, but uh, what's happening is they're rubbing on the guide plates and it's basically just shaving on them. Not all of them, just some of them, which I'm kind of wondering if it's just the ones that were maybe lashed too tight or too loose or something. Um, but some of them are definitely grinding pretty bad and you can see little uh, trails of uh, just little metal dust. I'll try to show you guys best I can. I don't know how well you can see any of that, but there's definitely, um, definitely, definitely some shaving going on there. Okay, so I got some new stuff in front of me. I just got done taking a road trip, uh, a little road trip. I went to the nearest Summit Racing by me and picked up these guys because I got some time to work on this. I'm not messing around. I want to get this thing out of here. So these are hardened, uh, rated to be used with guide plates. These are the stockers. I used them for whatever reason. Um, it is a little conflicting if you look into it. These are hardened push rods, but the differences are this is mild steel, like what this workbench is made out of. Um, I'm surprised that didn't dent. So you can tell it's been gouged up from rubbing on there. These are thinner. They have those little welded balls on there, all of the like weak stuff. This is chrome molly. This has been hardened. It doesn't have those ball things on it. There's no welds, uh, and it's thicker. So these literally just feel uh, more heavy duty. So I just got a set of those. This was the most affordable ones they had. Picked them up, and if nothing else, tearing all of this down was worth it to put these in because that would have definitely been a problem in the future. All right, it might not look that different to you guys, but I got all of the old junk out. We got all of the new junk in. And then to finish it up, I did just get done uh, doing a compression check. I did almost all the way around and that's really because it is just, it's nearly impossible to get a spark plug <laughs> to these last two holes. And there's no way I'm getting this like flexible ho hose down there and it's just, it, it would be kinked to the point to where it probably wouldn't work anyways. Um, I, it kind of sucks, but it's just the way it is. I did have a suspicious lifter over here on the, it'd be the intake on uh, number two piston. It seems like it's okay now. Once Since I've lashed it, it was just a tiny bit squishy. It was the only one that seemed different than all of them. So I'm going to keep that in mind going forward. Uh, hopefully it just has a little piece of junk in it and it clears out and everything's good. It might have already done that because it seems to be good now. Just in all the times I've had to turn this over doing compression and stuff. So now I just got to get this sucker all put back together. And it's time to see if attempt, like, I don't know at this point, to see if this thing fires up and actually runs properly. So that's what I'm waiting, I'm, I'm ready to go. Okay, next time you see this, it's gonna be all put together and we're gonna be ready to rock and roll just like that. Okay guys, this thing is put all back together now. Uh, it's looking pretty again. Besides for this air box, they're all put back together. I uh, actually did just a couple little extra things and fixed a couple other little minor issues I found along the way. Speaking of issues, there's something we gotta talk about. In 
putting this all back together and getting my spark plug wires back on, I found out that number two and number four, so this one and this one, these two pistons, those wires were swapped. So either they were, or when I wrote these numbers on here before we took it apart, somehow I put them on the wrong ones, but I think they were just wrong the whole time. So the more that I just tore into this, the more I was just amazed that this thing ran like at all. So I'm just, just <laughs> idiot. <laughs> the, I had the wrong push rods in. I had the wrong, well, I had to redo all the lash, but I'm pretty sure that was mixed up somehow too. And then I found those plug wires that were mixed up. So that's three things. Plus that idler thingy in there was not letting it idle right. That's probably, that's probably a blessing in disguise because it held the idle up and we probably would have never have kept this running without that. So, <laughs> I guess there's only one thing left to do. I'm pretty confident after all that, this thing's gonna fire right up. And if it doesn't, eh, I don't know. Okay, let's see what this baby's gonna do. I'm not even messing around, fuel pump's primed. Oh, ho. that was a lot better. Let's see here. Mm. Okay. We don't have any backfires yet. <laughs> all right so we're getting somewhere um it's actually pretty late i've spent like my entire saturday between the summit run and working tearing this apart and putting it back together so uh i'm pretty much just going to bed after this this has been a long day and my neighbors are pretty close to me so but i'm gonna get some sleep and then we're gonna come out in the morning and we're gonna, I'm gonna figure out whatever last little odds and ends, and I wanna get this thing, at, it's supposed to be nice, I wanna get out on the road, so let's cut to that. Okay guys, it is a new day, it's pretty nice out, I got the garage door open. So, I went over the last little odds and ends that I had for this. I got it. I actually just shut it down. I had it running. It does idle. It seems like it has a hard time getting to that idle. But it is running so much better. So like we're we're there. It's just I think the computer's just like learning 
uh, where to set the idle and stuff. Uh, but it goes in gear. I think we're ready to move. I even uh, made sure the lug nuts were torqued and uh, air in the tires and just like stupid stuff. So I think I'm ready to at least get this out of the garage and we'll go from there. All righty, let's see if we can get it going here.
pressure. I don't think it ever even warmed up enough for the second fan to come on. It's still doing that weird clicking thing, so I'm gonna have to look into that. But that's like really the only issue. Uh, we have a little drip of coolant, but I'm I'm not that concerned with it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> pretty successful voyage there, so. So I'm messing with these fans real quick over here, and I'm moving some wires around. I think the signal for the high fan is doing something janky, and it's just like clicking. Uh, so I think I'm just gonna hook these both up to the low, and then once that's done, like this thing's like 99%. Like I, I'm having a hard time thinking of anything else besides for a tiny coolant leak. So we are sitting really good actually. So uh, you wanna? Do the honors and after we drove it around i think the computer started to learn what it needed to do and it actually is starting up really nice now look at that like a like a clock all right feel it i, I gotta swap that i'm gonna hook both these up to the low so if you guys enjoyed this at all make sure you give a thumbs up on the video it really helps and uh i think that's it for now i'm gonna get this broken in and we'll see what we can get into with it and we can really do some full throttle stuff and have some real fun so uh thanks for hanging out though and i'll see you in the next one